The Madeline Journeys, Book Two, The New Normal, Chapter One. Madeline, my dear, you must bring your focus to bear. Blue tightened the shawl around his tiny frame to avoid the draft as Madeline Spell opened windows rather than moved the sheet of paper on the table. Madeline couldn't help but feel a little pride at the fact that she could blow windows open with magic. Even if she needed a lot of work with control, a year was not that long for this anyway. She'd gone from lawyer to mage in what seemed like the blink of an eye. In fact, she'd made more changes in the last ten months than she'd made in ten years back in her old world. Here in Cartreff, she'd won a vicious fight and found a husband and a friend and made a place for herself. Now all she needed to find was a purpose. Learning was interesting, but she needed more. She sighed and looked around the room for an image she could hold in her mind, something that would help her achieve inner focus so she could cast the stupid spell. The walls were made of heavy, dark wooden posts between which white plaster gleamed. The shutters banged and she rose to close them. The scent of pine and wood smoke filled her lungs before she pulled the windows closed and drew the tapestries. The air was chill. Fall was only days away. It was invigorating. Unfortunately, nothing in sight made her feel calm or focused. Turning to face the monk who had become her teacher, Madeline said, Blue, maybe we can try something else. I think twenty failed attempts are enough to break anyone's focus, don't you? She tried to keep the annoyance out of her voice because it was annoyance at herself, not at Blue. It is true some students excel only in one specific area, but if you do not learn to persevere when you fail, you will not achieve any mastery of this. Blue gestured for Madeline to sit across from him. Even so, let us try a summoning spell instead. I don't want to summon a devil. Madeline hoped there were no devils here. The actual creatures inhabiting this world were scary enough. I do not know what that is, but I suggest you try to summon a small object. I am hungry. Perhaps a muffin. I saw the cook baking before we came up here. He waited until she nodded. In your mind, find the place of quiet. Madeline pulled her curls back and tied her hair into a knot to keep it out of her face. Closing her eyes, she started to construct an image from memory. The image built from her imagination is a tickle of fine grains of sand, a slight smell of dustiness and salt, a sound of water advancing and retreating. A sigh slipped from her lips. This time it carried contentment, not frustration. Blue's voice floated to her. Now, visualize a muffin sitting on the table. It will have berries. Madeline smiled. Blue loved sweets. On her beach, she imagined a long table that the cooks used to hold food before serving. She added the smell of warm muffins, a little sweet and a little branny. Her mouth started to water. Do you have the image? Madeline kept focus on the sight of the single muffin sitting in the middle of the table and nodded. Now, you must gently replace the table with the one in this room. He waited again until Madeline nodded. Very good, Madeline. Now, reach for your power and command the muffin to exist here. In her old life, this was when she would turn to another interest, abandoning a hobby when it became work rather than fun. This was not a hobby, though. This was her passion. So she reached for the power she felt as heat on her skin, just enough to move the muffin. No flash, no fireworks, just a pastry. She tried to control the heat of her magic, visualizing a thermostat and working to maintain the measurements low on the scale. The image of the sandy beach faded, and her world focused only on the table. Then the table faded. Then the muffin. That is perfect, Madeline. At the sound of Blue's praise, Madeline felt a flush of pride. Then a heat storm of magic poured through her body. Something shifted, and the spell drained the energy that roared in her blood. She opened her eyes to see a charred muffin smoking in the center of the table. I'm sorry, she tried to slow her heart. I don't know what happened. She bit her lip, knowing exactly what happened. Despite Blue's assurances that all she needed was confidence, here was evidence that she didn't know what she was doing. Blue shook his head and then rose from the chair. Too much power, he said. 
Let us use a more practical way to gather our lunch.